get each of you here tonight. Is everybody looking forward to a good night at the 13th annual Heisman Homecoming? Well, that's good because I believe that this is going to be one of the best singings that you've been to in a long time. I've just got a real good feeling about it. My name is Jimbo Wilkinson. Now, I'm the president of the local Corinth Kiwanis Club. Not only that, I go to church with four of these Heisman men. And I'm just about as proud of that as I am of anything. They're very close and dear to my heart. And I can tell from the smiles on your faces tonight that that's the reason that you're here also. It's because they've meant so much to you over the years that they've been in the gospel singing business. I believe that you realize, as I do, that they live what they sing, and I'm so proud of them for that. I'm here to welcome you and let you know that if there's anything that we can do as members of the Kiwanis Club uh, for you tonight, you just search some of us up if there's a problem that you have, and we're going to do all that we can to see that this is the most enjoyable night that you've spent in a long time. One thing that we'd like for you to know is that we've got refreshments on this end of the field. We've got hamburgers, hot dogs, nachos, cokes, and the restrooms are right behind you under the stadium. And uh, I don't know of anything else that I need to tell you right now. So at this time, we're going to have a, a word of invocation. And I'm going to ask Brother Ralph Culp who's the pastor of the East Corinth Baptist Church, if he will, to come at this time and lead us in a word of invitation. Brother Ralph. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the opportunity that brings us all together in a time when these who will be singing with their voices and all of us will be singing in our hearts as we give praise to you. We thank you for your gospel, for your word, we thank you for your blessings, for your Son who is our Savior. And I pray, Lord, that tonight in everything that's done and said, you would receive honor and glory through it and through us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. There's no way we could tell you tonight just how happy we are for you to come and be a part of our homecoming for this year. It's such a joy to see you all. I've, I've already seen several people. Hope to uh, get around to speaking to all of you before the night's over. I wish I could recognize everybody, all the different towns and the states that are represented here, but we're not gonna take that kind of time. But we just want you to know that we love you and we appreciate the support you've given us all down through these years. And we want you to have a good time tonight. Just feel at home, and we're going to be doing our best to sing some songs that, that you'll enjoy. And uh, just, just make yourself comfortable and uh, uh, have a time of fellowship. And we hope this will be a, such a spiritual event tonight that none of us will quite be the same after we have left from this place. I'd like to mention this, we have a young man back here, his name is Randy Farrell. He is uh, doing a videotape of our homecoming tonight. And I understand that if you'd like to get a copy to uh, uh, run through your VCR at home, if you come around and talk to Randy, that uh, I think for a fee of about $20, you can watch it 365 days a year from now if you want to. But uh, so go around and talk to Randy if you'd like to have a copy of the videotape tonight. Also, I would like to uh, remind you that in the morning at 7 o'clock, we'll be having a fellowship breakfast at the Holiday Inn. Bill has taken care of all the necessary arrangements. And this is for uh, everybody, our out-of-town guests and our local folks. If you want to come and be with us for a time of fellowship and some good food in the morning at 7 o'clock, be at the Holiday Inn. We have a private room reserved. Now, I think Bill said we could seat maybe 150 people, something like this. So come and be with us. We're going to have a good time. We're not going to do a whole lot of talking tonight because we've got a lot of singing to do. 
We've got some people that's uh, going to start the program off for us tonight. A young lady who attends church out at Wheeler Grove Baptist Church. She does such a fine job. She sings for us out there quite often. She's coming to sing for us now. Her name is Mary Ann Manus, and she'll be accompanied at the piano by Lynn Hinton. Y'all make Mary Ann welcome as she comes tonight. Mary Ann. Dexter and I was responsible for some steps back here. It's not too sturdy, so we thought we'd better take a little time to get the young ladies off before they got hurt. They did a good job, didn't they? Did you really enjoy it? There's a young man from Bruce, Mississippi that uh, I've been knowing for quite some time. Uh, we think he has a beautiful voice, and he sings a pretty song. And we're going to ask him to come out right now and sing for you. His name is... Tim Ruth. Would you make him welcome, please? Tim?
down the course of time. So many still reach out to him with broken hearts and minds. And every one of them will say, with no exception that they find, that Jesus He brought his people through And then he came to show his love Then he died for me and you Then he rose again to prove That every story had been true That Jesus never This world brings trouble I find so hard to bear I know I could not make it without Jesus being there It's so encouraging to know However deep we're in despair To prove to you, tell me how can you deny? No untold facts, no mystery. It's all so cut and dry. And on the witness stand of your life, I'll be the first. Good job, Tim. Every year that we have had our homecoming out here on the football stadium, uh, it has been sponsored by the Corinth Kiwanis Club. We appreciate these people so very much. They're so easy and congenial to work with, and we have come to uh, really appreciate them down through the years. And yes, they've been out here through the heat today with us, uh, just sweating like we were, trying to get everything ready to go for tonight. Uh, and they have really made a special effort in getting the word out, and they've uh, got plenty of con uh, concessions for us here tonight. But they've gone just a little step further for our program tonight. They have a group that's going to sing. And I was instructed to just say anything I wanted to about it, but I better be careful because I really don't know a whole lot about them. The only one I personally know is Jimbo, but I, I, I think he's all right. But uh, I'll, I'll vouch for him. That's about as far as I'll better go. I think they're going to come up and sing two or three songs tonight. 
And I want y'all to make the group from the Kiwanis Club here in Corinth welcome tonight. How about it? Okay, bro. be here tonight representing uh, the Lord Jesus Christ first and then the Kiwanis Club second. Uh, I'd like to tell you who everybody is in the, in the uh, group over on the piano. We had to recruit her. She's not a member of the Kiwanis Club. But we're real glad to have her to help us tonight and real fortunate also. We couldn't talk Leon into playing with us. Uh, he said that he came too expensive. We couldn't afford him. So we got Miss, Miss Lily Cuff. Y'all give her a big hand. All right, now if I can remember the names of the rest of this ugly bunch, we'll tell you that singing bass tonight is Harold Patrick. Lead is Larry McCollum. Got Jimmy Fisher, the singing tenor. And Lanny Medley, singing tenor. And I'm Jimbo Wilkinson, and I'm trying to sing baritone. So we're glad to be here. The next song we're going to do is I'll Fly Away.
next song that we're going to sing is a song. It's an old song, but it's one that uh, that we like at our church, and I believe everybody here tonight's going to like it too. It's one. It's a song that uh, some of those days when you get up, you kind of feel bad and you just can't get the day started, but. After you have just a little talk with Jesus, everything just seems to kind of smooth out and makes the day a little bit better. So uh, if y'all have listened to us attentively, this is going to be our last song, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Well, you talk about them mobile homes. Uh, yeah, right. It's a hard line. Good job, good job. I, well, I know what you're thinking. Everybody's wondering, well, where is the show enough MC for the program? Well, I assure you, he's he's here. Brother Bill, you need to start making your way around there. And uh, just about every homecoming we've ever had, Brother Bill Frazier has uh, been our MC. As I guess about all of you know, this is Leon's dad. I saw him this morning early. They had all have breakfast out here at one of the restaurants and uh, the first time I had seen him in quite some time and you're not going to believe this but uh, within the last few months he has had open heart surgery again and he looks about 200% better than he did before he ever got sick for what I'm concerned I just couldn't believe 
how well he's looking. We're proud of him, and uh, we learned to love this man a long, long time ago, and I know you people do. And we're going to ask him right now to come uh, come forward and uh, be the MC for the rest of the program. Would y'all make Brother Bill Frazier welcome here tonight? Praise the Lord! Are you glad you're alive tonight? Come on, the Bible said that the dead can't praise him. They might have been here tonight to hear him sing and praise and worship and magnify the name of the Lord. Now, the Bible said Jesus did that you don't light a candle and put it on the bushel. Now, this group started singing a while ago. They sang some songs that lit my candle, and I'm not going to put it on their bushel. We're glad that you're here tonight. We know that you didn't come to hear me because you don't come like this to hear me all the time. <laughs> but we're glad that, that you're here, and the group's going to come and sing for us. Right now, in a few minutes, there's a group that I think a lot of and had a lot to do with. Some of the folks asked me what part did I sing with them, or didn't I sing? I said, no. I don't, but it hadn't been for me, there wouldn't have been any of them. I said, I'm not the head of the whole bunch here. Amen. And I hope tonight that they won't be like the lady that came to see the preacher one day and told her, said, Preacher, I want you to pray for me. He said, I've got a spirit of pride about me. He said, I just sit down in front of the mirror and admire my beauty for hours at a time. The preacher looked at her and said, Sister, you ain't got a spirit of pride. He said, you've got a spirit of imagination. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope these boys will be ready to sing tonight and don't just have a spirit of imagination. I know that they will, and uh, that's a Frazier group. And somebody was talking about another day by calling them Frazier, and I said, well, in the beginning, there's all Frasers. I said, the Adam was a Frazier. They, they started doing things God told them not to do, and they kicked them out and started to call them something else. <laughs> so we're proud of this group that's called the Frasier. Would you give them a welcome here tonight as they come and sing for you right now? Amen. Now that, that sounded pretty good, but I believe the group did better than that when Elvis Presley sang the old hound dog. Now, let's see, you stand on your feet right now. Amen. And let's sure enough give the praise of family a hand as they come to sing for us tonight. <laughs>
to be here tonight. It's good to see all of you here and I know you're not hot because you're just sitting there doing this way but uh, maybe it's better to be hot wet from hot than wet from rain so you just make yourself as comfortable as you can and just have a big time. That's what we're here for tonight to worship the Lord and have a big time and uh, we got two little ones back here that's going to come out right now and sing one for you. Uh, they're Frasers also. Well, one of them, I don't know where you could say it, a Frasier or not. It, I'm a Frasier and it's my sister's girl, but they don't call her a Frasier. I don't know why. They call her a Sanders. Uh, you listen now and enjoy these two little girls as they sing. Dresel Frasier on this side and Stephanie Sanders on the other side. Thank you. 
we are uh, gonna have to do a little state changing because we got on the wrong end of the stage. They just like a bunch of old. I can't say that really. They just like a bunch. <laughs> Old mules, that's what I was trying to think of. They gotta be on the right side of the single tree or they don't know how to pull. So this gets us geared up. Maybe right. We still got one mic down there off course, fellas. Y'all bring it up. We're gonna ask uh, everybody knows who everybody up here is, I know, but it won't take just a second to tell you that this is my sister. I mean this is my daughter, Duana. And I know you've enjoyed her singing and you will continue. Next to her is my daddy's daughter's husband. <laughs> he's kin to my daddy and my sister so far in the family, as far as he's got. That's far enough. <laughs> now Gene thinks he's playing the most important instrument up here. The truth is it don't take a lot of talent to play a bass guitar. That's the reason Gene's playing it tonight. And the only reason we got one is because everybody else has a bass guitar playing. Gene's brother is playing the drums. And I know you've met brothers like this before. Gene worries about everything. Joe don't worry about nothing. Gene worries about Joe. Joe could care less about Gene. You seen brothers that way? I'm trying to really paint you a picture for the ones that don't know Gene, really what kind of fella he is. And I'm going to tell you right quick, you know how brothers will kind of get into an argument and fuss and, you know, you know how brothers do. Everybody that's got brothers, you know how they are. Okay, Gene and Joe kind of got in an argument one day and they fussing and Gene said, Joe, I'll tell you what I'll do. I want this thing settled and I'll meet you halfway. I'll admit I'm right if you'll admit you're wrong. <laughs> That tell you kind of what kind of fella Gene is. Would you make welcome tonight, Gene and Joe Sanders? Felton is playing the lead, steel, and banjo, and a little bit of everything else he wants to up here. Problem we have with Felton, he talks too much. You've heard him say everything he's going to say tonight. He's already said it up here tonight. You've heard him. I tell this, I've told it on him, and I don't know, I guess his wife is here somewhere. I haven't spotted her, but I'm sure she is. But Felton's real bashful. And when he was dating Sheila, why, he uh, found out, you know, he, he, he said, I'd like to marry that little young girl. And, but he was so bashful, he didn't know how to ask her to marry him. So on this particular weekend coming in, he said, on this date, I'm going to ask her to marry me some way or the other. They got out on their date, and he did. He said, Sheila, how would you like to be buried with the rest of my family? <laughs> she accepted, and they're living happy ever after. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> on the end down here is, is, is Daddy's grandson. Daddy couldn't understand why he had four boys, and I'm probably the largest one of the four. And then he had a grandson to come along so large. Told it wasn't hard for me to understand. We had onions and, onions and cornbread for breakfast. He had ham and eggs. You don't grow too big on onion and cornbread for breakfast, I guarantee you. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Duana don't understand things like that. I go to talking about when we sweep the kitchen floor. It's about like these trailers up here. It fall through before you ever get to the door. How many has lived in those kind of houses? <laughs> See there, Dwan? I hadn't, I hadn't. There's a lot of old people out there. <laughs> yeah, wake up and snow would be all over you, blanket. Yeah, I, that's, Daddy was there too. <laughs> I was living with him at that time. <laughs> he used to talk about them shuck beds. How I many slept on a shuck bed tonight? He said every time he'd turn over the cow's ball, I thought she was going to go out and feed him. <laughs> I remember we had a fire and it started in the bathroom and we were scared to death he was going to make it up to our house. <laughs> but of all the boys and the girls thrown in at home, Keith's daddy, and he's here somewhere tonight, and 
he'll bounce and say amen probably. Got more spankings than all the rest of us put together when we was growing up. And I told him should he went to bed at night and realized he hadn't got a spanking, he'd done something for daddy to get him before the night was over. He thought he had to have a spanking every night. So when he was mad, got mad, and Keith came along, he thought, well, that's exactly what I'm supposed to do is start spanking on him. So he started spanking Keith. Every day he gave Keith this real good spanking. This particular day he got after him pretty heavy, and he felt bad about it, and he got him up in his lap and said, Keith, I did that because I love you. Keith looked up at him and said, yes, Dad, I know that. And I'll be glad when I get big enough to return that love to you, too. <laughs> Would you make Keith Frazier welcome tonight? My name's Leon. Nothing like that's ever happened to me, and I'm glad to be here also. We're going to ask Joanna if she would to get her, it's really a fiddle. Most time if you're uptown, it's a violin, or if a lady plays it, it's a violin. But we're going to ask her if she would just to do a little fiddling for you here tonight. And Felton, if you'll get that banjo, it'll be okay here tonight if you to play all five strings of it. And I want y'all, they're going to do some picking. And Gene's going to do their grinning. <laughs> in serious trouble when we do that because Gene thinks he's playing the most important instrument up here so we got to do a song right quick and it'll feature Gene on the bass guitar he said he'd been waiting on this all night you won't understand or recognize nothing he's playing it'll be a lot of bump 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 and a thump 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 you act like you enjoy it and he won't know the difference and everything will be fine don't anybody get up and leave. He's not sticking his tongue out at you or making a face. He just can't play this without getting in that position. And it, Can I tell something? It will bog down, but Felton and I kind of help him pull it out there before it gets plumbed down in the okay. grass out here. Yeah. You remember what happened Mother night? <laughs> this guy jumped up and, oh, he enjoyed his playing so much. Gene was so proud. He was so happy somebody liked his playing. <laughs> he thought he had one fan, and the guy says, but I'm tone deaf. <laughs> All right, here we go.
Jimmy's bass guitar playing. That's pretty good. I want us to slow down and do a do a song tonight that is special out here under the stars because it's God's creation. We're just out in in his world experiencing the wonders of all his power. So special. But I want us to sing a song that Dad wrote a year or so ago. And it talks about even a, a greater creation of God, and it, that is heaven. There's not too much better thing I know of to sing of to you than about heaven and God's power and glory. We've sung this for the past few months everywhere we've gone. And every time we sing it, it really blesses my heart, and I hope and pray that it will yours tonight. If you don't listen, or if you don't comprehend anything that we sang tonight, I wish you'd listen to this one song. I wish you'd think about it with us. Just think how suddenly your life could be over. You may not even make it home tonight. Where would you be? This song is for the Christians. It's talking about when I make it home and I've made it to heaven. You listen as Dad sings, you worship with us when I realize that I've made it home. We're going to sing a song. It's new to us, but it's, I know you've heard it. It's been played a lot quite lately, and uh, this is what tonight's all about. And I tell them it doesn't matter if you live to be 250 years old and gain the whole world and yet lose your soul, you haven't accomplished nothing in this life. You don't want to miss heaven. 
And looking across the crowd tonight, I see a lot of people I haven't seen in a long time. And I can't think of a better song than this one that would fit to tell you what we're trying to tell you. And you listen as we sing it. going to feature Gene. You listen to C sing. Oh, 
you've enjoyed them tonight. Give them one more hand, would you? All right, now I know you've enjoyed that, and we're going to move right along with the program. Now, I don't know why they were singing tonight. Now, really, it didn't look like that I'd ever be in another singing a few years ago. Uh, husband had their first homecoming down at Boomville. We got down there that night, and the boys didn't. Leon told the boys, said, don't ask him to do it till he get down here, he won't do it. They'll ask me about emceeing it for him. And I told him, I said, I, I can't do that for you boys. I said, I'll embarrass you. I don't know a thing about it because I was raised for four back out in the country. we get there, play, listen to the Grand Ole Opry on Saturday night. We didn't get it till Monday night. See, I was thrown up back in the country. <laughs> and I said, I don't do it. I just uh, I embarrass you fellas. They said, won't you do it? I said, I'll do it. If you let me do it my way, <laughs> they said that's what we want. So we've been doing everything. Every homecoming got there, and we've had a little part in it. But the doctors looked at us in the face and said, the preacher said, if you ever preach anymore, said you'll have to do it sitting down and don't get excited. <laughs> Amen. I said, Donnie, you done excited me. I said, raised up and threw my foot off the side of the bed. I said, I want you to ask you something, and you tell me, and then I'll listen at you. I said, when I look into the Word of God and find where there's a man that they had him tied up, bound up, and was really fixing to fix him up, and God turned him loose, and he reached out his hand, got a hold of a new jawbone of ass, and knocked a thousand in the head, and piled him up, and he walked off and left him. I said, now, come on, Doc, and tell me how I can read that and not get excited about it. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Hey, man. Well, you never told me, and I've never said, yeah, I never had to preach yet sitting down. Uh, hey, man, may have to him here on out, but I feel, feel him fine tonight. Hey, man. Somebody said, well, uh, Brother Frey, you're really looking good. I said, I've always looked good. It wasn't my looks that had me down and where I fell. <laughs> hey, man, but they're talking about the little ones singing while I go. I told them we had one out the church. But born out that couldn't play and sing, we'd give them somebody else. We wouldn't keep them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. A lot of people think we're kind of going off the deep end, but I want to tell you something tonight, folks. A number of years ago, I lived here in Conrad just about all my life. I was born out near uh, Surratt's Pond, out of, uh, east of town. I run up and down the back alleys of, of Corinth and stole whiskey from old bootleggers that they didn't know where they were going. Me and a few more of the boys stole more of the whiskey than they got to sell. But one day God shined a light across my pathway, and I went to an old-fashioned altar, repented of my sin. God filled me the Holy Ghost and called me to preach the gospel. Now, I've, well, for over uh, 40 years now, I've had a better time feeling bad than more folk can feeling good. <laughs> well! have more fun, more joy, accidentally, more folk can on purpose. I've had people tell me, say, well, I pray, said, I'm a Christian, we go to church, we don't cut up like you do. I said, I don't guess you do. You can't trade hold if you haven't got a horse. <laughs> Yeah, man, you can't do that if you hadn't got it. Children call me. We got a revival coming up out the church next week, and children and young people all met out there Thursday night to pray. And about, uh, I guess, about 8:30, maybe 9 o'clock, they called me and said, "Come out here quick." We had a young man that started coming out there with him some, and he takes care of the how they up and down on this music back there just as it for him. And so I mean, he'd been easing in out there with him and coming to the other night they got him in the altar and he started praying and they called me and said, Come out here quick and I got out there and boy had both hands there and he was praying and crying and talking to the Lord and begging the Lord to forgive him. And the Lord then he said, I'll be baptized. Fifteen minutes till ten o'clock we baptized him. When I got through I had five of them boys. There were five of us uh, in, in the baptistry and you talking about having a time now we had a time hey, hey man praise the name of the lord well you may have never acted like that i don't know that's up to you how you get it but the, see the bible said that is christ in you the hope of glory and the bible said that he's from everlasting to everlasting that heaven's his throne and earth is at footstool and you think about them paul said is christ in you the hope of glory take something all that big and it gets inside of you, and you can't tell it. I saw a little old racer snake swallow a frog one time. You could tell he had something in him. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I'm glad tonight that I'm here. Amen. Glad I'm feeding what I'm feeding. I told the folks that God did more for Abraham after he passed 100 than he ever did before he got to be 100. 
I might get a hundred and then what it be doing for me. We preach around all over the country, preach about what a miracle it was when Abraham was a hundred years old, Sarah was nine in, and Isaac was born, see? But after Sarah died, and after Isaac was born and Sarah died, Abraham moved on down the road, married him another woman, and raised six more. After he passed a hundred, amen. How many ready to hear the Hyman Quartet sing? Come on. Yeah, amen. Let's stand to your feet right now. If you want to hear me, you've been sitting quite a little while. And I want you to sure enough give my hand. Come on. Yeah, amen. Hyman Quartet, the original Hyman. They're ready to sing tonight. And they're going to sing. And we want you to let them know that you ain't going to. Stadium. Amen. Amen. We look around and we see all the friends that we've got here tonight and folks I want to tell you it would be hard tonight for me to find the words to tell you just the joy and the feeling that I have in my heart tonight. We look around we see folks from Louisiana, South Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, 
and all of our friends here at home. Listen, we just couldn't make it without you. We had a, they, they did a little write-up for us this week in the paper, and, the, and we made a statement in there that we believe that we had one of the greatest followings of any hometown group in the country. And listen, you have proved that tonight. We thank you so very much. Listen, you're doing a good job tonight, and we hope that we're going to be a blessing to you. I want you to listen now as we sing about the dearest friend that I have. That friend is Jesus Christ, my precious Lord.
got that victory tonight. You know you have. You know in your heart that you've got Jesus Christ living in your heart. Isn't it good tonight to know that Christ Jesus lives in our heart? You know, that's an old battle we don't have to fight anymore. You know, a lot of folks have a hard time coming to that decision. You know, that should be the easiest decision that a man has to make in this world, is to let Jesus Christ come and live in his heart. I don't understand folks that can't let Jesus live in their life. I tell you what, we're going to slow down a bit and let, let you listen to some good baritone singing. Dean Lawrence can sing it for you. He sings a beautiful song. You know, Jesus didn't say, I'm going to be with you. He didn't say, I was with you. He said, I am with thee. You listen as Dean sings it. stop for just a few minutes. Is there anybody here tonight who have never seen the Heisman sing before? Is there anybody? Would you raise your hand? I want you to look. I didn't know there was that many folks in Corinth that hadn't seen us at one time or another. Maybe some of these folks are from out of town, so I tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to introduce the fellows to you. Now, as you can see, they, some of the fellows have got a little bit different look 
probably than the last time you've seen it. Uh, some of us have pretty well remained the same, trim, nice looking, clean cut. Uh, some of us have changed our hairdos uh, somewhat over the years. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, we, the, the man down on the end down here that sings the tenor, he's, he's one of the most popular men uh, in this area for a lot of reasons. Now, I tell you what, Dexter changed his hairdo here some time back, and we've been trying to figure out what you call it. Well, I'm going to tell you, we, I found out in just the last few days what this hairdo really is. You know, back when I was growing up, they had what they called a soup bowl haircut. Now, that's what Dexter's got. Now, they can call it these newfangled hairdos if they want to, but Dexter's got a soup bowl haircut. <laughs> now, hey, really what happened, Dexter went to sleep chewing chewing gum, and uh, it got stuck right back here, and we had to cut it out. And it hasn't grown back yet. It may not. It probably won't. Y'all talk and I'll sing. I tell you what we're going to do. I'm not going to ask Dexter to take a bow, but would y'all make him welcome tonight? He don't bow too low, I'll tell you that. I don't know why Norman's grinning. He don't either. He's afraid his will fall off. I want you to make welcome tonight one of the best lead singers in this country today, Norman Benjamin. What are you laughing about? <laughs> I tell you what, Dean don't take a bow for a lot of reasons. I want you to make welcome one of the best baritone singers in the country today, Mr. Dean Lawrence. Would you What are you laughing about? Well, you don't need to laugh. You about halfway introduced yourself a while ago. Now, I'm going to do it for you. I don't really want to get into everything that I need to tell about Leon, but there's a lot of things that ought to really be told. Now, he'll just go so far when he's up here telling you. And he don't, you notice he don't let anybody else do much talking when they're up here singing. He more or less handles the whole show. Now, he's the orchestra leader. Uh, the MC, uh, the piano player, the organ player, and uh, just more or less the leader, I guess, of the other group. But now, it's a different situation when he's up here. He don't get all the say when he's up here with us. We tell him what to do, we tell him when to play, and he does it that way. Been that way for 40 years. <laughs> do you want to take a bow? Stand up, Leon. I want y'all to make Leon Frazier welcome, would you? Listen, my name is Bill Gant, and I'm glad to be here tonight. He's the most hated man in all Corn County. Bill Gant. I tell you, this, everybody here... How many are from here in Alcorn County? Would y'all raise your hand? I want you to look, boy. The rest of y'all must not be from here. Would y'all raise y'all's hands also? Some of y'all have raised them twice. I would. But I, I want to tell you, how many was at our last homecoming two years ago? How many stayed with us at our last homecoming two years ago? When, when Bill was first elected sheriff, why, we was all going to try to help him. And uh, I, I didn't run for that office. And I, I didn't really have time to help him was my big excuse, because I didn't have time to help him. But I did agree that I'd go down there and try to run the radio while I was out here running around getting everybody, that I thought that part would be OK for me, because I thought I might be safe down there, you know. And I went out one time, oh, Dexter and them came by and told me to get my uniform on was going out one night 
and I, they came back in an hour. I still didn't have that uniform on, and they told me they would give me one more hour to put that uniform on. And they came back in another hour. I still didn't have that uniform on, but they made me go out that night anyway. And they called, first thing we got in the car, they called and they was looking for this here truck. You know what I'm talking about? They had done something wrong, they thought. And, and they got to hunting that truck. I didn't, I, I didn't want to find that truck. <laughs> they, what do y'all call that thing? What's that car? Flash. Old Flash. That's what they call that car. Dexter and that other drives. Old Flash found that truck. And they stopped. They called her numbers and said, I'm out of the vehicle checking the subject. I gave them my number and I said, I'm still in the vehicle. <laughs> Don't intend to get out. <laughs> they went on a, on a, on a pre and, and, and this guy came out with, with something, you know, with two barrels and he got to spray in and Dexter run and got behind the tree and he got scared because he couldn't keep his knees back behind that tree. <laughs> Is that right, Dexter? You're telling this. Go ahead. Bro. So I'm I'm on I'm in inactive duty as of I I went down there and run the radio and they brought some guy in and he shot down in there, shot through down there where the radio was and that was my last option to help him was run the radio but I thought that was safe so they're having to do all this without Dean are you helping them any? No way. Without, <laughs> Help. Norman, are you happy? Now, we're not really chicken, but we are feather legged. All right, listen. We have, uh, we have changed the look of the Heisman to a great degree. And from, from now on, uh, we're going to be using these fellows back here on most everything that we sing. And I enjoy listening to the fellows play. They've got some of the greatest talent there is in this country today. The fellows have it in their heart. They live it. And we're proud of them. Listen, I want to stand back now and let you make them welcome one more time. The family band, would you? We, they, they played pretty good a while ago, and, and Joey, we're going to... Oh, Blue, I don't want to let it down because it's been in the uh, shop, uh, uh, a garage, a, a barn, maybe a, whatever it was, for two years, and we, we drug this old baby out. And, and it still played. After two years setting up, yeah, it still played, and I'm afraid if I don't play it tonight, the next time we drag it out, Old Blue might not say nothing. Okay, that be all right? We're going we're gonna to play, and they're going to help, and we're going to feature. Old Blue's gonna show Old Blue off tonight, all right?
that's picking people. Let me tell you. We're going to sing a song now featuring our lead singer. This is one that he can get his teeth into. Listen, if he, if he don't sing this song suit suits y'all, y'all get on and we'll make him do it if he does it right. All right? Listen as we sing the sweetest song I know. <laughs> when we get together to sing in front of our friends, get to listen to the musicians play. But you know one day, before too long, it doesn't make any difference if we live to be 100, if we live to be 110, or if we only live to be 60, the Lord's going to call us on home to be in glory. Those of us, that is, that know Jesus Christ and have him living in our heart. You know, there's going to be a great time when we get to heaven. Can you imagine in your heart tonight how it's going to be when we first realize that we've made it to heaven? The beauty and the joy. But you know, there's something else. There's going to be a shouting time when we realize and get to see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one that made it all possible. The one that made it possible that you and I could gather right here at Warrior Stadium in Corinth, Mississippi tonight and enjoy the gospel in song. I want you to listen tonight as we keep it kind of up-tempo. Here's a beautiful song entitled Shouting Time. <laughs> Oh, 
to say amen yet? Amen. Say it again. Amen. All right. Now that sounds better. We can get down to business. We're going to sing a song right now that, folks, I'm going to tell you, I don't know how we went from 1969 until now, and we didn't get this song in our repertoire, if you want to call it that. I don't know. That just sounds good to me. <laughs> but anyway, I think this is one of the most beautiful songs that I ever heard. And uh, we kind of featured Dexter just a little bit on this. Now, we don't want to let Dexter get out front too much. Uh, we're just going to let him ease out just a little bit. Y'all think he ought to come on out front a little bit? <laughs> Brother Dexter, the ball is in your park, son. I can handle it, Bill. All right. Y'all listeners were saying, I am his. so many friends that we sang to for so many years. It just don't seem like it's been 1969 since we started singing, and then we've been out of the business now for about six years, but we're going to start singing again a little bit. Norm, it's good to see you here tonight. <laughs> it 
everybody remembers our, our bus that we used to have. It was so pretty. And I think that at the time it was built, it was one of the prettiest buses that we had that was on the road. He's here tonight. Norm Basin built it for us. He's from Birmingham. We're so glad you're here. We got Roy from Alabama. He used to sing with us a little bit. We got so many friends here tonight. You know, I hope we're a blessing to you tonight. That's all we want to be is just a blessing. We're planning on doing about six or seven singings a year, and I hope the Lord will use it. And I hope that it's where you can come out and see it. And we want to do this as a ministry for Him. You know, that's all we're here for. If we can't do something to please Him, and you be blessed through our singing, it's all in vain, folks. And I'm so glad tonight that I can sing this song, and I know that I'm His and He's mine. It's such a beautiful sound. It's so sweet to know I have Jesus with me.
forget, I want to tell you again, in the morning at 7 o'clock, we'll be expecting a lot of y'all to come be with us over the Holiday Inn, having breakfast, a time of fellowship. Make us feel mighty good, and we hope it be a blessing to you. We'll eat a good meal, we'll have a good time. Just come over and we'll have a little more time maybe to sit down in a little more relaxed atmosphere and talk. Just discuss a few things. If we got everybody about ready to go back here, I believe we have. Tell you what I want you to do. Now, the harder you get on these folks, the harder and better they're going to sing for you. Now, I know how it is, and uh, they'll kind of lag a little on you if you don't really get on them. Leon will. He'll, he'll sit down on you if you don't really punch him. Tell you what I want y'all to do. I want you to really get your hands together, make these folks feel real good, and they'll sing their hearts out for you. Would you do that? How about making the Frazier family and the family band welcome one more time? We're going to do one a little different here while we're waiting on Duana to get up here. And uh, as we told you a while ago when you heard Gene play the bass guitar, why it's so simple, we're going to sing a song and Keith's going to do, do the bass guitar with your mouth. Really nothing to it. You Real listen. simple. Are you ready? Yep. Uh -huh. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. Boom, boom, boom. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And still my soul, still my soul is, heaven bound. is heaven bound. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock my soul. Boom, boom, boom. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. 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 Oh, rock my soul. Why don't you rock my soul? Well, I wouldn't know how that happened.
touch me, O oh Lord, I pray. That's all it takes is a touch from the Lord. We are, we're going to do one a little different right now. They say every good group needs a good bass singer, and we're not any different from every good group. We need a, a bass singer. <laughs> but we're going to do the best we can with what we got to do with here tonight, Keith. You have to be low down to sing his part, that right, Norm? So Keith is low down one in our bunch. <laughs> you listen, we drag an old song up and feature Keith on the bass. Just a little talk with you. Jesus, baby, tell him all about us. 
We're going to let Gene sing one. He's, he's picked around up here on this guitar tonight like he knew what he was doing. Now we're going to see how he makes out on singing. Bible says when you've done all you can do but stand, just go ahead and stand. And that's not easy, and I guarantee if you try it within yourself, you'll fall. But if you'll ask the Lord, he'll help you. No matter what comes against you, you can keep standing. You listen as Gene sings, Lord, please help me to stand.
we've enjoyed being here on this part. We're going to sing one more little song here and then get the old, old man back up here. I traveled a long time with these fellas, and they, I was a young boy, and they was a bunch of old men. And I about caught them, I reckon. We don't, we don't look much different now. I don't know. I'm gonna have to find out what, what they're doing. But anyway, you, you listen and then make, make the fellas welcome. every now and then, do you? You know that's a brand new song? That's the first time I've ever heard it in my life, Leo. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, it's been a joy tonight just to be here. Our heart has been blessed. I hope tonight that when we get ready to depart from this, this place, that you can go away and have as great a blessing in your heart as I've had in my heart tonight. God has blessed me abundantly tonight. And you know, regardless of, of what we do in life or what we are or what we amount to, the thing that really counts is our status with our Heavenly Father, and that is Jesus Christ. We praise Him tonight because without Him wouldn't be any of this possible. We're going to sing a song that goes back down to Ryan's of Mississippi. A lady down there wrote this song a few years ago. Dean picked it up, and he read over it, and he said, Fellas, we're going to have to sing this song. Here it is. You listen as we sing. That's why I'm thankful. Yeah. 
everything you've got, you ought to try it sometime. <laughs> Let me tell you, some of the greatest followers, I guess, that the Heisman had back during the time when we were singing so much, were some of the little tiny folks that come to hear us sing. And they didn't just come just to hear us sing. There was another thing that happened uh, that, they, that they always liked. And we just about did it for them every time that we got up to do a program. Somewhere in the program, we let Leon make this organ sound like an old-fashioned choo-choo train. How many of y'all have heard it? Take your hands down right quick. How many of y'all never have heard it? All right. How it's many cute. don't want to hear it? <laughs> we, Bill, you sure are doing a lot of voting around here tonight. Well, I'm used to that. I tell you what, when you run two, two sheriff, two, three sheriff's races, you get used to that more. <laughs> I tell you what, this is the most relaxed I've been up for a crowd in a long time, people. Let me tell you something. If you don't think it can get to you getting up on a platform running for sheriff, you ought to try that sometime. <laughs> you talk about when the pressure's on. I'm telling you. Listen. <laughs> We're going to let Leon play this organ here and make it sound like a train. Now, I tell you what, I want all the little kids to focus your attention in this direction. Now, some of you mamas and dads are going to have to get their attention first. <laughs> but I know there's some here that has never heard an old-fashioned choo-choo train. Now, if you're fixing to get to hear one, Leon, are you ready? All right, here we go.
Some of y'all have already gone to sleep on it. There's a fellow sitting right down there that blue strappy shirt on. I know he's gone to sleep. He likes to jump on my head. Tell him that boy. Yeah. Son, I tell you what, he, he likes to clear that chair. <laughs> Scared his wife. I think she started to run. <laughs> He does. I tell you what, y'all you, better watch him then. Got some special friends here tonight from down in Jackson, Mississippi, Major David Huggins and his lovely wife, Judy, and two little girls. We're going to sing a song tonight just especially for Becca. She's over there waving her hands. Becca, this is your song. I want you to listen. This song features Dexter in the bass. We sing My First Look. learned a song that uh, for a period of time I guess was one of the most popular gospel songs that any of the groups were singing and just about all of the gospel groups sang this song. Now this is one that we really hadn't planned to sing tonight and we're just going to sing a portion of the song. It's a song that features our baritone singer. He, he sings the verses on it. And I tell you what, when you listen to this song there's a lot of things that, you, that have to go through a Christian's mind. You know, we think about walking on Hallelujah Square. And in the song, we hear words like crippled children will be walking. We hear about an old man as he call, comes off onto heaven's shore. And we know that 
all things when we get to heaven are going to be perfect as far as we're concerned. There'll be no tears and no sorrow. I want you to listen to Dean tonight. We're singing this because a lot of you have asked us to sing it tonight. We hope it blesses your heart. Listen as he sings Hallelujah Square. step back and let Dexter sing a song now that you've asked us to sing tonight. Many of you come by and ask if we had this song on the program. It's one that we sang, I guess, as much as any song that we ever sang. When you listen to Dexter sing it, you understand why that we sang it so much. It's a beautiful song entitled, Where We Ever Shall Be.
enjoy it, Brother Dexter, tonight. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do something that I don't think we ever did before when we were having a concert program. We're going to ask Dexter to come, and we're going to give all of you an opportunity to sing a little bit. Now, Dexter's got uh, two or three courses that he's going to let us all sing. How, how many of y'all like to sing a little bit? All right, I want everybody to stand up. Come on. Y'all been sitting down for a long time. Time you worked a little bit. All right, Dexter. Tell you what, let's do. We can... We can make it sound so good tonight, echoing off of the, the buildings and the, and the stadium over there. Let's sing a verse of hallelujah. Everybody knows it. Let's sing it together, okay? Hallelujah. Let's sing it together. I'll tell you what to do. As you sing it, turn around and just shake hands with your neighbor. Tell him you love him in the Lord tonight. Would you do that? Just turn around and shake hands and see who's sitting beside you. God is so singing. Bill? Up to you. All right. We're going to sing some more. Listen, y'all may be seated. We're not gone yet. Listen, you've been a joy to us tonight. You have honored us, and we appreciate that so much by coming. A lot of you have drove a long way just to be here tonight. We want to thank you from the bottom of our heart. Our hearts have been blessed, and we hope and pray tonight that yours has. I want to ask you tomorrow, if you can, go to church. Those of you who are here from out of town, we'd be thrilled to death to have you to come to Wheeler Grove Baptist Church. We're out in the country. We're country folks. We don't apologize for that. We're proud of that. Leon's father's church over here. What is the name of that road over there? Glover Drive. It's over here in the west side of town just before you get to the bypass. They'd be tickled to death to have you to come and worship with them tomorrow. Listen, tomorrow is Sunday. Tomorrow we need to honor our blessed Lord and go to church. 7 o'clock in the morning, the holiday in for breakfast and a fellowship time. 
Listen, here's a song that is new to the Heisman. We've never sang this song before anywhere. We hope tonight that it blesses your heart. It's already blessed ours. And if we don't see you in, anymore in this world, we'll see you in the rapture. Father, we're thankful tonight for every blessing, Lord, that you've given us. Lord, we're thankful that once again we can come together and enjoy fellowship and love with thy Christian people. Lord, we're thankful for each person who has put forth an effort tonight to make this program possible. Lord, we pray that you would bless each word that's been spoken and each song that's been sung. And Lord, bless each piece of music that's been put forth tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would bless your people now. 
Bless them, Lord, on their way to their homes and to their places of abode tonight. We'll be careful and give you the praise in your precious, sweet name. Amen. God bless you. Still got some food down here at the uh, at the concession stands. Everything now is half price. If you want to go down and get something before you go, if you want to get a coke or a hamburger, just go by and get it. It won't cost you hardly so much.